Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer. Come on in, pull up a chair, because today I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit from Wizards of the Coast. Yes, come, we're off to Fantastical Adventure. Welcome aboard, gang. I'm Jeff McAleer, the Grand Poobah of TheGamingGang.com. I'm your host tonight, and I'm going to be diving in to take a first look at the new D&D Essentials Kit. This actually arrived on the 24th of the month. Currently, this is a Target exclusive. It will not be available to online retailers or other stores, your friendly local game stores, until September. So, the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit, as I mentioned, is from Wizards of the Coast. It is a Target exclusive here in the United States until September 3rd. The Essentials Kit does carry an MSRP of $24.99. So let's move on over to the other camera here. I have really been looking forward to this because it's my understanding that what we've got here is another starter set another beginner's box for Dungeons and Dragons with a little bit of a different kind of focus as well as an all new adventure as well so I'm going to put my specs on here it does show that this is for two to six players I believe there's also kind of a uh, a new uh, push towards one-on-one -on -one gaming with dungeon masters and a single player I believe there's a, there's a bit of a uh, topic in this box. We're going to talk about how you can play D&D &D with one dungeon master and one player. Very, very cool. I'm looking forward to this. So it says, unleash your imagination. Defeat the dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Dungeons and Dragons is a cooperative storytelling game that harnesses your imagination and invites you to explore a fantastic world of adventure where heroes battle monsters, find treasures, and overcome epic quests. This box, can, box contains the essentials. You'll need to run a D&D &D game with one dungeon master and one to five adventurers. Pretty cool. Let's get the shrink wrap off and crack this on open. I was a big fan of the original uh, beginner box. The original starter kit that D&D had with um, Lost Mine of Fendelver as far as the adventure. I thought they did a really, really nice job with that. I thought that was really well done. So first off, we see we've got a set of dice. So we've got our percentile dice. We've got uh, a couple of 20-siders. And amazingly enough, we have four six-sided dice in this bag. That is unusual because... Normally, when you get a set of polyhedral dice, it's one six-sided die. It's kind of like, really? One six-sider? So here we at least have four, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I see we've got the adventure book here. And look at this. Look at the, the spine on this. Very nice. Very nice. So we've got, uh, look at this. We've got a box that we're going to put a deck of cards into. And look at this. We're going to fold it out. <laughs> That's pretty wild. There we go. Here we got a box right there for a deck of cards. Bingo. Because I had noticed on the back of the box they were showing like a, a deck of cards. And I thought, oh, okay. So uh, so how they how they got these in here? So it turns out you're going to separate the cards and you're going to put them in this box. All right. So that's cool. I'm going to move that to the side. So here we got the cards. So we've got initiative, we've got some combat, we've got uh, different conditions, we've got non-player characters, it looks like. Sure enough. Or maybe these are player characters, I don't know. we got more magic items and quests. So let's look at these. 
magic items. Unfortunately, it looks like there's no artwork. Boo! I gotta be honest, I'm not a huge uh, proponent of using cards and things like that in my role-playing games. It's just me. That's just, you know, my approach to it. I'm also a guy who doesn't really use miniatures. I'm more theater to the mind than anything else. So, uh, but that's kind of cool. We got these cards. I like these NPC cards. I think that's kind of cool. And uh, we looks uh, looks like we got like personality, ideal, bond, and flaw. So uh, maybe these are player characters. We'll find out. Okay, so we've got that. So we've got the deck of cards. We've got the, these are informational cards here. So we've got deafened, charmed, blind, blinded, I should say. Incapacitated, grappled, frightened, petrified, paralyzed. I get a kick out of the paralyzed being dragged off by what looks to be kind of like a zombie. Invisible. And then it kind of talks about these different conditions. We got restrained, prone, and poisoned. Unconscious. <laughs> I should say unconscious. Jeez, what the heck? I can't speak today. Uh, stunned. And then we got magic charms combat cards so uh these are all identical combat step by step so you can give these out to your players got initiative cards so these are basically just uh number who's going first second third fourth so on that's cool so we've got those quite a few cards quite a few cards uh that you're gonna these are of course they're they're perforated so you're gonna separate those like so I would probably recommend if you want to want to really be careful is maybe take a ruler and uh, a hobby knife and separate them. Although, yeah, that's coming apart pretty easy. That's that's been really nicely perforated. See how easily this comes apart this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about a hobby knife then. Cool. So there you go. So those come apart pretty quickly. And easily, so we've got a map of the Sword Coast, or part of the Sword Coast, Neverwinter Wood. So obviously this is a map of where this adventure is probably taking place. Mount Hottenau, the Neverwinter Wood, Star Metal Hills, Coneybury. There you go, Ice Spire Peak, that's where that dragon's at. And the Sword Mountains... So is this dual-sided? Yes, it is. So then we've got Fandalen, the town of Fandalen. So there we go. Some uh, unique areas or unique locations. So we got the Stonehill Inn, the Shrine of Luck, Herbin Wester's home. Nice. Cool. So we've got that. Here's the rule book, and look at this. Once again, it's not just it's not just a paper book. This is this is what you would normally. What are we looking at? About 64 pages. Boom! Look at that. 64. We got 64 as far as the adventure here. Let's find out. Look at that. 64. That seems to be like like the traditional count for uh, like an adventure path or for supplements and that. So. Both of these books are 64 pages and really, really dig the fact that uh, it's not just, these are not just regular kind of just paper books with uh, with staples on the spine here. Nice, very nice. We're going to look through these books in just a sec. We're just taking a look to see what we've got. Here's something that I, I know comes with it that I thought, well, that's pretty cool because usually we don't see a dungeon master screen for these starter boxes. Although I have to admit, I just reviewed the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition uh, starter set from Cubicle 7 Entertainment, and the box itself is kind of a basic uh, game master screen. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of funny how they did that. And that is jam-packed with goodness. I have to point that out. But we're not talking about Warhammer Fantasy. We're talking about D&D. Cool, I like this. Now, granted, okay, it's just cardstock, but still, usually, you know, a lot of times it's like, well, yeah, you want a Game Master screen? Well, 
you know, spend 15 bucks or more. Although I know you can get them on Amazon for quite a bit cheaper than that. I like the artwork on it, too. Cool artwork. Nicely done. This is so far so good. I gotta admit. Okay, so we're gonna have, what, uh, a few blank character sheets? Okay, so, uh, yeah, sure enough, that's what we got. We've got one, two, three, well, we got six, that's my guess, sure enough, yep, we have six blank character sheets, and paper stock is really nice on these as well. And then we've got a little bit of an advertisement. So there we go, it's the starter set, which I, I gave a nine out of 10 when I reviewed it when it first came out. And uh, for what I'm looking at here so far, this this looks like you got some solid value for $24.99. Okay, so, uh, and looks like there's a, a coupon for 50% off your digital version of a player's handbook at D&D Beyond. So one of these days, I'm going to have to get somebody from Wizards of the Coast to, to jump on Skype or something, do an interview and talk a little bit about D, D beyond because i think a lot of people don't understand what it really is uh they think it's more like to store your characters and things like that as opposed to actually utilizing it for uh online play so uh so we got the character sheets we've got the little ad we've got the various different cards we've got the map we've got the cool game master's screen we've got the little box to put those cards in as well as a bunch of dice. Now, let's take a look at these books. Uh, I will point out, I am going to look through the adventure book. So, spoiler alert. I'm not going to, you know, sit there and, like, read through all the different stuff. But I do want to point out that uh, if you are looking forward to playing uh, Dragon of Ice <laughs> by your peak, you might not want to watch that section when I start looking through the book there. So let's uh, let's take a look here. We've got the Essentials Rule Book. Really nice paper stock here. It's got a bit of a finish to it. So it's talking about Welcome to D&D. Talking about the rules. We've got character creation rules in this, which is unusual. Let me uh, zoom out just a touch. I'm a little too close there. There we go. Um, Usually, the starter sets, starter boxes um, for other role-playing games normally do not have any kind of character creation rules in them. Here we get, right, right off the bat, creating a character. So we've got uh, the information about the different races, we've got the different classes. Of course, obviously, this is not going to go into the kind of detail that you would find in the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, monster manual, things like that. But uh, you're going to get quite a, quite a bit of information here. So you're looking at uh, about a page for each of the cultures. So the dwarves, the elves, halflings, humans. Humans, not so much. But then again, you know, you really need to have humans explained to you. So we've got the different classes. we got the bard, the cleric. Got fighter, the rogue, uh, the wizard. So we've got those characters. Then we got the different backgrounds. I mean, there's a lot in this to uh, getting started with the characters. Now we got playing the game. So about 28 pages in. Now well, I'd say about 20 of them were devoted to creating the characters. So we got playing the game. This artwork looks new. Uh, I might be wrong, but the artwork does look new to me. So talking about advantage, disadvantage, saving throws, ability checks. Talking about the different attribute checks. Social interaction, resting. Uh, I know a lot of people out there. No, okay, I'll take that back. Not a lot of people. Some people out there uh, don't like the fact that it's... You really got to kind of go out of your way to kill... The player characters in 5th edition. Because it's pretty easy for you to recover hit points and spells and things like that. I don't know. I mean, you know, I was never one of these people who, you know, my approach is not, 
it's a it's a battle between the game master and the players. To me, it's all we're all on the same side. We're all trying to have a uh, have a blast, create a really fun story, memorable story. And I think that's probably why uh, my friends who have played games that I've been the game master or dungeon master, I guess we could say, uh, remember those those adventures a long time afterwards. So we've got uh, some equipment, so we're going to get into some gear. Got magic items, giving us uh, a few different magic items. Or probably, I'm going to take a guess the magic items might be what happens to be in this adventure as well. Uh, we've got some spells. Of course, it's only going to give us probably first level, maybe first and second level. I oh, know we're getting third level spells. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. That's cool. All right, so we've got the different spells and then sidekicks. This is, I think, uh, this is the sidekick aspect is what they're talking about as far as trying to be able to play Dungeons and Dragons more as a one on one experience. So, for an example, um, you've got Cthulhu Confidential, which is from Pelgrane Press, which is uh, like Trail of Cthulhu, but it's, it's designed to be one on one. Call of Cthulhu, who actually happens to be a, a role-playing game that does work very well as a one-on-one -on -one anyway. So uh, Cthulhu Confidential is sort of like that, where it's, you know, you can't get a bunch of people together to play. That's fine. Perfect. So let's see. Um, so it's on your adventures. The DM might reveal that you've befriended a special character called a sidekick who joins your party. This appendix presents the game st statistics for sidekicks, which there are three types, expert, spellcaster, and warrior. Huh, okay. So as opposed to hirelings or like mi minions and stuff? I don't know. I don't think that's really enough <laughs> information to be like, okay, well, we can play some one-on-one. -on -one. I'm taking a wild guess that we've probably got more in uh, the how to play the game section that talks about that so cool very nice 64 pages for the essentials kit the rule book here and now let's take a look at dragon of ice fire peak which once again this 64 pages this should be quite a good amount of adventure for you to jump into oh wow that's pretty wild a skeletal horse running the adventure the overview here we go that's a copy of the map that we already saw we've got a hand out of the map Beginning the adventure. Where's the white dragon? Talking about leveling up. So we've got different locations here. I'm going to kind of flip through this at a fairly quick pace to try to avoid some of the spoilers. Of course, we've got the little areas with the read aloud, which so far so good because Wizards of the Coast themselves in an interior memo, I've mentioned this a few times, have pretty much said anything more than three sentences in a read aloud, the players are going to check out. <laughs> so, so at least we're not seeing big walls of text. Just kind of flipping through. Got some cool maps. Got, uh, I'm going to take a guess. We're probably going to get uh, a good amount of just about everything. We're going to get some wilderness adventuring. We already see that we've got, uh, Got a little bit of dungeon. A little, it's like a little dungeon area here. There's like quite a few locations on that uh, dungeon map too. Uh, two different levels to it. So we've got a dwarven excavation. It's got quite a few different locales here. Yeah, I mean, I gotta be honest. Looks like you've got uh, some solid adventuring ahead of you in this. So here's the Ice Spire Hold. Yeah, so we got outdoor locations. We've got some dungeon locations. That's one of the funny things that that I always kind of laughed at was uh, Dungeons and Dragons didn't have a lot of dungeons. <laughs> so sort of like old school D and D had quite a quite a good amount of dungeons in that, but uh, like newer editions kind of got away from the dungeons and sort of like, well, but it's in your name. So we got ending the adventure. What's what's next? Okay, so we got some creature stat blocks. 
some creature descriptions. So some of these are straight out of the monster manual. And uh, thankfully we are seeing some images of some of the various different NPCs as well as the monsters. And of course, obviously enough, it's like giant crab. Do they really have to show you a picture of a giant crab, giant rat? I think we can figure out what that looks like, right? A cow. Do we need an image of a cow? Uh, so that's pretty cool. One thing that kind of bugs me is when you'll have like a like a monster manual or bestiary and they've got, you know, tons and tons of creatures, but you're only getting maybe, you know, one image out of four. And they're all like weird, different fantasy creatures. To me, that's kind of disappointing. But here, right here, we're seeing... The Manticore, the Mimic, the Ochre Jelly, the Ogre, an Orc, showing the Sturge, and a Young White Dragon. Sweet. Very nice. So, uh, and of course on the back we get a map key. So that is 64 pages for the Dragon of Icefire Peak Adventure. Wow, there's, like I said, there's a lot of goodness in this, in this box. Uh, we've got the dice with plenty of six siders for a change. We got the little GM screen. We got the maps. We got the cards. We got the box. Does the box fit in here? Yep, it fits in. I was like, hey, I hope the box fits in here. And that is what we find when we take everything from the Dungeons and Dragons Essentials Kit outside the box. Of course, I will have a review of the Essentials Kit in the very near future. As I mentioned before, the Dungeons & Dragons Essentials Kit is available now. It is a Target exclusive in the United States. It will not be arriving at your friendly local game store or online retailers until September 3rd. So if you wanna get your hands on it before then, you gotta go to Target. And it does carry an MSRP of $24.99. So, there you have it. Uh, I do want to point out when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, and don't forget, I host the live uh, episodes of The Daily Dope Monday through Friday right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. But when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. You'll learn the drill. Anyway, once again, I'm Jeff MacLear. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you're ready for some more fun and you'd like to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, my live Monday through Friday show that airs at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube, click right here. And if you'd like to roll the dice and push your luck and see a randomly selected video from the channel, click right here. You pays your money, you takes your chances. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer and thank you for watching.